What's going on people? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Chelsea have just beaten Aston Villa 2-1 yesterday at Villa Park. We've been waiting for this match since March. Past it was going to be my first time going to Aston Villa, but we moved. The football has finally come back and for Chelsea, we were a little bit worried because, I mean, everyone around us was dropping points and it did look like the pressure was going to be on us and we were going to eventually have to drop points as well. And especially when we went 1-0 down, we were sitting there thinking, is this going to be exactly like last season where every team's struggling to gain ground in the top four race? But we turned it around. The substitutions from Frank Lampard were brilliant and we were able to turn the game back around on its head very early into the second half. The start of the game was a bit slow and a lot, a lot of periods of the game were slow and it was to be expected. I mean... Both teams are still coming back to full match fitness. I mean, the whole of football is trying to come back into full match fitness. If anything, Aston Villa have an extra game than us from the game against Sheffield United last week. And I was kind of thinking that they were going to go into this game with a bit more intensity than we had. And for players across the board, I think it's there wasn't really a consistent style of fitness. There were players that were more fit than other players. And you could see in the performances, like it was very few and far between them. The start of the game was slow, uh, it took us about into 20-30 20, 20, minutes into actually start getting some impact or start putting some pressure on Aston Villa. Mason Mount I thought was brilliant, I thought he was my personal man of the match. He's continued on the form from March and it's added to my belief that Mason Mount is the same thing with Tammy Abraham. The only reason why they dropped in form was because they were being overplayed too much. Mason Mount had a drop in form around the Christmas period, very similar to Tammy Abraham and both players were having their first season at a top six club in the Premier League and I think for Mason Mount it was his first season in the Premier League. So it was obvious that they were going to have their drops in form and I think criticism for both of them has been very harsh. I think for Tammy Abraham I think it's a little it's been a little bit fairer because goals speak a lot more than any other stat if we're being honest and if Tammy Abraham's our highest goal scorer any sort of criticism that you're going to give him is always going to have a butt on it because he's still produced and for his first season at a top six club his numbers are still pretty good so for Tammy Abraham no one's going to give him any stick but Mason Mount oh, before lockdown he was really starting to turn a corner in his form his game against Spurs was brilliant his game against Everton was brilliant as well now he comes back into lockdown with I will say extra rest as well Mason Mount still looks banging form and he looks like the player he, well he's showing the potential that he's been threatening to show for a lot of this season Season. William didn't think he was all that great. If anything, I won't go too much about the players. I'll talk about that in the player ratings later. Aston Villa got the first goal. We were doing a watch along. We didn't even catch that one on Blues Fans TV because the stream was just dying throughout the first half. I said Kepa was at fault for the goal in my review. I was wrong. I didn't hadn't seen the goal enough times to make a claim on that. I looked back here. The defence was completely ball watching. If anything, it was a great save from Kepa the first time round. So apologies for criticising Kepa. That was wrong. I was wrong. I understand that. Christensen, I think, if anything, the defence in general, they all just fell asleep when the ball came back for the rebound. Any of them gets a touch on it and they clear it. It's not a goal. But the whole defence was just caught ball watching. Whoever the number 39 was put the ball into the back of the net and it was 1-0. And it looked frustrating because the thing with these relegation threatened sides, especially when it comes to the final few games of the season or the run-in for the season, as soon as you give them a goal, they're just going to sit back. You give Aston Villa or any other team the bottom six a lead, that's all they've come for and they're just going to sit because that's all they've got. And when it, the second half started, it looked like it was just going to be another frustrating 45 minutes where we struggled to break down a relegation threat inside. And we've had these sorts of games so much this season, which is why I'm so happy that we were able to turn it around the way that we did. The substitutions were brilliant from Lampard. Kovacic was not having one of his best games. He, didn't look like he was fully fit either. Came off and we brought on Barkley and we brought on Pulisic as well. Who did we take off for Pulisic? I think we took off, it was Kovacic and, I should know this, one second. It was Kovacic and, was it Loftus-Cheek? I think it was Loftus-Cheek, yeah. But Loftus-Cheek as well was his first game back from Premier League injury. It was his first back from his... Ruben Loftus-Cheek, it was his first game back in about 13 months in the Premier League. And I will be real, he didn't have a great game, but he's not fully fit. And if anything, he's coming back from, he's climbing a higher mountain than the rest of the players have. Because Ruben Loftus-Cheek has been out for 13 months, he's been injury prone for a lot of his career. And if anything, we just need to see him get back to match fitness. I think he 
did pretty well for himself. I think maybe him and Giroud kind of clashed a little bit because they were both trying to do the same sort of thing where they were trying to drop, drop deep and collect the ball and release it. And I think they kind of got in their way a little, in each other's way a little bit, which is why I'm kind of glad I got to see Loftus Cheek come off. You just want to see him build himself back up to match fitness and build up his confidence again because even with Hudson Odoi, you saw just coming back from injury, isn't it? And it's also about up in here. Confidence has got to rise a little bit. And with, with Ruben Loftus Cheek, it's going to take a while for him to get back to being the player that we saw him like last season or whenever we saw him on loan at Crystal Palace or whenever he showed us the potential of the player that he's meant to be. So for me, so for Ruben Loftus Cheek, it's just good to see him back on the pitch and get some minutes. Substitutions were brilliant. Uh, Pulisic showed exactly why we've been missing him over the last over the last couple months. Sorry for that. Christian Pulisic was amazing. As for Laqueta, I want to give a shout out to as well for the two assists. He was really struggling in the first half of his delivery. Second half, he just got two crosses and he got two goals. So you can't really say anything about that. He had a much better second half performance than the first. Olivier Giroud, I think, also had a frustrating game. Like I said, with Loftus Cheek, I think they're both trying to do the same sorts of thing. And with Aston Villa, they are still a very tall, very physical side, and it was going to be a hard game for Olivier Giroud. But it was all about persevering. It's all about waiting for the chance to come. And good football leading up to the second goal he found himself in space it was a nice turn as well and he put the ball into the back of the net to make it 2-1 but that we more or less saw the game out from there was still a couple more chances but it both both teams are still coming back into match fitness and i didn't the game was full of some chances but most phases were still a little bit slow i'm gonna move straight into the player ratings now going to start off in goal with Kepa. Like I said, I was wrong about Kepa for the first goal. I put the blame on him in my review on Blues Fans TV, but it was wrong. It was a good delivery, and yet he did well when he, when he was called across. I don't think he had a bad game. I'm going to give him a six. As for Laqueta at right back, um, like I said, he didn't have a great first half. The crosses weren't doing well. The delivery wasn't great, but the second half, two, two balls in, two goals kind of saves his performance. I'm going to give Azpilicueta a 7 for that. Solid defensively. Going forward, all right until the, until the second half. Second half, he was immense. Antonio Rudiger looked very rusty today. I will say there were some chances where he cleared the ball pretty well, but there were some moments where he nearly cost us the game. You remember, he went for a scuff he went for a pass backwards in the second half and he scuffed it really badly and he was, he was lucky Kepler was first out to get to it. Uh, rash from him, I'm going to give him a 6. Andreas Christensen, more or less the same. I think he struggled as well. He's the main guy to blame for the ball watching for the first goal. He was the closest to it, but he didn't do anything. Didn't really get into the, mu into the match that much. He did have a couple clearances to his name. Maybe I'm harsh saying the Villa goal wasn't his fault, but he still didn't do anything to stop it. I'm going to give him a 6 as well. Marcus Alonso. Mm. I don't think he was that into the match. Uh, Lampard did say his he was mainly trying to focus our attacks around the right side, so I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. But he still didn't really offer much. And with Chelsea looking for a new left back, he would want to see Marcus Alonso try and show why he should still be getting more game time at this club. Didn't see much from him. I'm going to give him a five. And Golo Kante, we played him in DM in the role that everyone's been saying that he should be playing at for years. Passing wasn't that great, I will say that, but that's the only real negative. I he was only put in, deep in that position to try and keep Grealish out of the game, and he did his job brilliantly. So, bar that, I think he, he, he did his job. So, I'm not going to sit there and complain about it. And Golo Kante gets a 7. I think he showed exactly in this game why we shouldn't be even thinking about selling him. And I think, regardless of what anyone says about whether he fits in this team or not, a player like N'Golo Kante, you've got to find a way to fit him in the team regardless. So, selling N'Golo Kante is out of your mind, in my opinion. N'Golo Kante... Kante, I'm going to give a 7. Mateo Kovacic uh, didn't have a lot of an impact today. And I think maybe he didn't suit the game. I, I'm not sure. He tried to be a bit creative, but it wasn't really working out for him. You could see him get frustrated towards the second half, which is why he got the substitution. I think maybe a 5 would be a little bit harsh. I'll, I'll push to a 6, maybe. Uh, Mason Mount, my personal man of the match. I'm going to give him a 9. Mason Mount, a lot of the attack came from him. A lot of our key chances came from him. 
that he shot at the first half. He gave us our first real test at the goalkeeper. He was involved in the build-up for the second goal as well. Creative, creatively brilliant. I think he did struggle a little bit with the physicality that Aston Villa was showing, but he was still able to keep himself. He was still able to find space and still able to create chance and still able to have an impact of the game. So Mason Mount, I'm going to give a nine. Ross Barkley. Uh, I'd say he had a better performance than Kovacic. I will give him that. Barkley. Smart substitution as well because you do want to see him try and build on the form that he had pre-lockdown. Those two games from Ross Barkley before lockdown against Liverpool and Everton were amazing. Now, in fact, last three, I'll throw the Tottenham game in as well. He was brilliant in that game as well. Hopefully, he can continue to prove uh, to show solid performances because I will be real. His position is still on the line, and I think the last couple, ga the last few games of this season are going to be key to whether he is at Chelsea next season or not. Ross Barkley, I'm going to give a six. Reese James, I think he was deployed in midfield. Didn't have a good game, but he only played about the last five minutes and it was obviously wasn't match fit. Maybe he wasn't sure of his position. And it is still hard to try and get into the speed of the game when you're coming on as a substitute, so it is understandable. Not, I'm not going to give him a rating. He was only on the pitch for about five minutes, so I'm going to leave it like that. Willian, not a lot of impact, I think. Very predictable. Did the same things that you expected to see. The corners, I will give him a little bit of credit for. I mean, only one of them was terrible. I think the rest of them found themselves in right positions. I think maybe it was the rest of it was just Aston Villa. They are much better at set pieces than we are, in my opinion. William had a tough time getting good deliveries into the box from crosses. Corners, I think, it was a little bit better. The shots fired in maybe had a little bit too much height to it, but impact not so much there i'm going to give him a six olivier Giroud as well i'm going to give him a six i think he had a very quiet first half and like i said previously he didn't struggle with the creativity that aston villa was he didn't struggle with the physicality that aston villa was showing but it was very 50 50 and it he was able to get the goal in the end and that's what the perseverance was a much greater factor to and I like I give credit to him for that because it's very easy to just get frustrated and just give up if players are fighting 50-50 to you in the physicality battle and you're not winning a lot of them because he was struggling a lot in the first half so I give him credit for that maybe well, up into a now nah, I was thinking of up into a seven but I'll leave it at a six I think he had a good game regardless Pulisic, I'm going to give an 8 because the game completely changed on his head when he turned on the, when he came onto the pitch. The guy is different level. His off the ball movement is brilliant. He was really smart to try and come in off the far hand side to get the ball in from Azpilicueta for the first goal. Helped in on the build up for the second part of the attack and our attack just flowed a lot better with him on the pitch. So I'm going to give Pulisic an 8. Tammy Abraham as well. I'm not going to give him a rating, same as Reese James. He weren't on the pitch for long enough, and I don't think he had enough of an impact of the game to be given a judge. But, yeah, I'm not going to give him a rating either. Uh, that's the end of my player ratings. This is probably how I'm going to be doing reviews from now on in this channel. If you guys like this sort of video, don't forget to let me know down in the comment section below if you guys like this. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And press the bell notification button to be the first to know whenever I upload a new video as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to... Uh, nearly said Blues Fans TV. I'm so used to saying that. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And we'll see you guys... We're going to do a, a City preview? Yeah, we're going to do a City preview. I'll see you guys very, very soon for the Man City preview. Take care. Up the Chelsea.